you know, when you're a smaller startup and, you know, we were 40 plus employees when I joined, what, what tends to happen is every, everybody in the company does a bit of everything and the segmentation of jobs is not as clear as when companies grow. And so here, the, the first thing I, I, I did is, is really segmenting team and trying to, trying to make people understand that every department needs to have multiple functions within these departments for the company to grow. And so as an example, when I joined Lightspeed, the, the sales team and the account management team and the onboarding team and, and the support team were all one and everybody was doing a bit of everything. And so here, the first step I did was to say, okay, when, when, if, if we want this company to scale and we want this company to grow, it's very important that we narrow the scope of everyone. And the, the, the main reason why you'd want to do this is when you think about hiring, um, when you hire an, a, a new employee, you need to make their job very streamlined because if not, it becomes very difficult to grow. And the, the, the problem Lightspeed had been facing for a bit about six months is they they didn't manage to grow the teams and they couldn't grow fast enough to respond to the demand and that was mainly because every time someone joined the company they had to learn everything about the company before they could be a performant employee and so what I, what what really happened here is interviewing everyone and trying to figure out from the interview who has aspirations for what learning a lot of feedback from all the employees and then what happened is I developed a vision and a strategy of how we would segment the roles. And then what I did is I then had a second round of meeting with every employee and proposing a few jobs to each of the employees based on what I thought they would be good. And, and here what we saw when we think about segmenting is the, the fear of the employee. They were, they were worried that if I gave them a job today, that that would be the job they would have for the rest of their career. And so here what we had to promote also was the fact that we segment, we narrow your job, but we will promote internally and we will help people go from one job to the next if they want to expand their capabilities. And so here, um, at pretty much at the same time, we, we moved into our headquarters and we're at Gare Vigée, it's a Canadian Pacific previous Canadian Pacific Hotel. And the reason why we loved the, this building, and we, uh, we started with one floor, two floors, and now we have the entire building. But the reason why we like this building is it was a very narrow and long building. And the idea here to, to, was to say, okay, let's have a physical journey. Let's create a space where physically our customers are gonna be moved from one department to the next, and we could control the quality. And that was the second big message um, when we segmented was to say the experience of a customer before they buy and after they buy needs to be streamlined and needs to be just as good. And so here if you look at, um, at the slide, what, what we did is we really mapped the customer journey physically throughout the building and we could see the customers going from one to the next. And so here you can see on the left is marketing, then uh, SDR, sales, uh, sales operations, onboarding. And so the idea was to say, okay, where is my customer in this journey? And by segmenting the roles, I could then grow each department in a much faster way than having one person handle the entire journey of the customer. Here, uh, also one of the advantages of really mapping your process and understanding how you're gonna segment you know, your roles and what's the journey of the customer going to be, is we then went through a big international expansion and we opened go-to-market offices in Montreal, Toronto, Amsterdam, London, Ghent, Geneva, Brisbane, and the latest is Sydney, but the good news is we knew our process very well, we knew how the roles were segmented, so as we were growing, what we would do is export some of our employees to the regions, and we would remap exactly the same journey. And I think this is really important when you think about scaling, and especially in our business, given it's the high number of customers and you needed really high velocity, is any office in the world of Lightspeed now has exactly the same methodology, exactly the same tools, and exactly the same roles. Second thing when we, of the six topics is numbers, 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 and really, um, and I think this was instrumental and is, is always instrumental to, to growing, is figuring out once you've segmented every, every one of your employees into groups, you now need to find a way to, to measure the performance of these groups. And, and what, do, what do I mean by measuring is you need to figure out what are your key drivers of success within each department, and you really need to have a methodology to, 
to deploy this. And, and, and so for us, what we did is every department started developing their KPIs and then became OKRs, but at the time was KPIs. And then what we knew is what were the, the key elements we wanted to measure from these. And then from there, every week, we would stare at exactly the same numbers and have a management meeting where everybody would sit together, all the leads of all the groups, and we would just stare at the numbers and ensure that all of the drivers and all of the numbers we wanted to meet were, were, were analyzed every week and with the right cadence. And here, why am I saying numbers? I think everybody knows numbers are important and you need to measure. But I think for me, you can't dissociate defining those measure points and the cadence. And often what I see is people spend a lot of time putting in place the, the, the points to measure. Okay, what are my OKRs? And I think people do a fairly good job at the highest level when you think about MRR and you think about churn and you think about ARPU and you think about LTV and CAC and all of this. But here, our view was to say every department needs to have their key me metrics and we need to relentlessly look at those same numbers and set targets based on those numbers. And so here, um, when you think about it, and, and these obviously are not, we're public now, so I can't really share any number, but what we had is we had every department define what would be the important measures. And so here as an example in marketing, we would look at the cost of a marketing lead, the cost of a qualified lead, the, customer, the cost of a customer, and the lifetime value. And we became so obsessed by this that at the end, and even and today, I can look at any keyword campaign within any platform, Google or social media, and I can, three, I can view through time what was exactly the cost of a lead, a qualified lead, a landed customer, and what were my churn curves on, this, on, on, on these, these profiles of customers. So again, the idea here is look at every department, look at every subgroup, and ensure that we all agree on what are the key measures here. And then what you need to do is have a cadence where every week the leaders review all together every single metrics. And here what's interesting is the conversation doesn't become, oh, have you looked at this number? Have you found this number? The conversation becomes what happened here. And here you can go much faster into resolution and ensure that with this cadence, Every week, as soon as a number is not in, in line with the expectations, you can address it. So here, support sales, of course, MR, store count. Um, and maybe another point is you've got to try and measure everything. Even the departments that you think might not be measurable, you need to try and measure. And, and again, that was, again, um, trying to work and then finally try to get the systems to grab the data because if not, you'll, you'll spend a lot of time if you don't get the right systems. So here's a, a very good example, and I still do this every week. Um, everybody knows at 10.30 every week, there's a huddle with uh, all of everybody today in the company and go to market, so 500 people. There's, there are Zoom sessions, we have microphones, we have everything you can imagine. But every week at 10.30, everybody knows review of numbers. And so I stand up in front of everyone, we look at who's performed, what region has performed, what region hasn't, what product's doing well, um, and, and you basically share the high numbers and the, and, and the low. So a uh, conversation could be, well, uh, UK this week, maybe you need to wake up, something's wrong. But so here the idea is that the whole company understands that there's a cadence and that you know, numbers are not measured every month or every quarter or every six months. Numbers are measured every week at light speed. And, it, it just, and, and then I think what happens with time, it just attracts the right people. And those who are not up for it basically you know, do not join the company because then everybody in the ecosystem knows your culture, knows this is what you're about. Third, you've put your teams in place, you've defined narrower scopes, you've defined the KPIs. Number three is in your face incentives. So here, and again, I, I know uh, that, you know, I would expect everybody knows this, but you, you won't act on what you can't see. And so here, if you go through every one of our departments, there's dashboards everywhere. And everybody sees the performance of everyone. And that was another big thing is everybody, oh, you can't show individual performance. That's not true, people love it. And actually, every one of our departments has dashboards. And in every one of those dashboards, even if you're in support, even if you're in onboarding, you'll see the person that's at the top of the list and the, people, the person that's at the bottom of the list. And, and here, again, with this, if you attract A players that, are, that, you know, that want to compete, want to prove they're the best, 
regardless of what they do at Lightspeed, if their information, if the KPIs of the group and the individuals in the group becomes very public to everyone, well then those high performers perform even more. And what I can see is um, with time again, those who are low performers, you almost don't need to manage them because what they will realize after a certain amount of time is, look, I'm not meant for it, this is not for me. And, and so it just drives the whole ecosystem and it drives the energy um, of, of everybody in the company and it drives high performers to want to join and to want to, to, to succeed. And so here, really, everybody in the company has their, 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 their dashboard, that is their individual dashboard, and then on the public TVs everywhere in every department, you have all performance that's out there, and what is our achievement based on the target we had set. Other kinds of incentives we've put in place, so this is the cheesiest probably, maybe not, but um, so these are JP dollars, and so th the, the other thing we realize with time is money is not everything, and, and actually people perform, um, you need gamification for people to perform. And this is one of the, the examples of what we had put in place, and it, it's funny because you know you do it one year and you're like, okay, well, this is the period we're gonna have fun, and it just continues. And every year now this has become a tradition is in our highest month where we have the highest volume of sale, we create JP dollars, and basically uh, on top of the commission, every rep who signs and who has the right behavior and does the right thing, will basically earn JP dollars, and then we've put in place an e-commerce website on Lightspeed, not on Shopify, and that uh, e-commerce website enables them to redeem points, and with the points, they redeem gifts. And so, again, just thinking about how do you make the environment favorable, and how do you make this, a, you know, a dynamic, and you have to find, you have to be creative. Another example that um, we used to do, and we still do once in a while, is we, We'll put dollar bills inside of balloons, we'll blow the balloons up, and every time a sales guy closes a big deal, he's allowed to shoot the balloon, and he'll discover whatever, and sometimes it's a, he has to buy a coffee to, 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 to the boss, or sometimes he's gonna get, uh, I don't know, uh, an Apple gift card inside of the balloon. But this idea of showing the numbers and, and, and getting the buy-in from everyone and getting the excitement there is, is very important uh, inside of Lightspeed. I'm just gonna show you another few ones. This is the Lightspeed Riders Cup. Um, so this is, you know, when we started opening offices everywhere, we are like, okay, we're gonna make each office compete. So that creates teamwork within the office. So we define OKRs in each office. And then it's, I don't know who, who plays golf, but it's like a Riders Cup. So it, it would be all the, the offices against each other. And then the one who wins the cup, actually we physically engrave the name of the team and ship the cup for one quarter to the, to the team um, that, that won the cup and they're very proud to have it. And it's, I mean, this is like a hundred dollar, you know, uh, gimmick here, but just this idea of being the best team and owning your cup. And so try and find ideas once you're presenting the numbers to everyone to get your people to have fun as they're working. This is a, another reward. We've done that since uh, day one is President's Club. I think that's more, uh, you know, uh, in the industry people know about this more, but the, the President's Club is every high, the highest performers everywhere at Lightspeed, everywhere in the world. We do, um, we bring them every year and, and they're normally nice places, uh, often involves, you know, Caribbeans, water, sea, uh, boats. But again, it's just the idea of saying, hey, we want to build a high velocity team, we want to reward the best, and we want the best to know that we care about them because I don't know for you, but we have a lot of people trying to hire employees pretty much every day. The fourth thing I think that's important inside of a team and, and how do you build the velocity, how do you make your teams accept anything? Trial and error. And I think, um, yeah, well, you, you can't go from, you know, 40 somewhat employees to 1,000 in seven years without accepting change. And so here it starts by encouraging your teams to try things and to fail, and encouraging your teams when they fail to revert back. And I think it's a culture of change. And so, I, you know, I often say, if, if you don't like change, don't, don't even get close to light speed because you will, you, so every employee in the company is acquainted to, hey, this month we're gonna try this differently. And everybody in the company is acquainted to, we can, we can change your commission plans, we can change the whole process, we can change the handoff on sales, we can change uh, you know, how we support, 
And I, as an example, I, I can give you a few here, but right now we're thinking about handoff between marketing leads and sales leads. And we're, we're trying a ton of technologies, we're trying, but that person who does the qualifying of those leads has to just accept that you know, their job might not even be here in a few years or that their job's gonna evolve. And I think embracing change and embracing trial and error is very important because what we've realized is sometimes what you assume is gonna happen is not what happens. And so just get the whole organization. Another example I can give you is, for the longest of times we've, we had this belief that chat was not good for support. And here again, the, the person in charge of the department went to a lot of, the part, the, the, a lot of, of, of events and, and what we're seeing is chat is becoming more and more important for, for companies like ours because a chat agent has a better satisfaction rate and a chat agent um, can, can answer three or four times more tickets than a call. And here, uh, you know, talking about small businesses, small restaurateurs and retailers, we always had this assumption that chat is not good. Well, we, and again, we just said, okay, let's just try it. So we, we put a technology in place, put a number of people, and we realized that this is probably the future of the company. And now, in the next, uh, in, the, in the coming, uh, you know, months and years, we're gonna be completely changing how we operate. And here again, this, if, if, if you don't have this deep down ingrained belief that change is good and that trying things is good and that, you know, if we want to stay relevant, we need to evolve, you're gonna have a really hard time um, making your, your employees happy. The last, um, number five is land and expand. Um, so here, land and expand is, is I, I think, is part of a life cycle of a company. When, when you're small, the focus of a, of a SaaS company when you're small is to get a lot of new customers. And, and the main focus of marketing, the main, main focus on you know, where do you spend your time, where do you allocate your resources, is around how do I get more? And, and, and here, what, what happened throughout the years is we, we realized, well, the expand is just as important to us as the land. And I think it's part of the mindset. So um, a, a few years ago, we, we started talking about, okay, we gotta do more. And I think if I had, I, I would have done this sooner, you know, with, with, with hindsight. And, and so here, the idea of land and expand is to say, I'm gonna actually develop two completely different groups that are gonna look at getting more customers and expanding those customers. And so here, I, I just wanted to show you a little internal um, process map that we have. Um, we'll try to simplify as much as possible, but if you look at the left side, it's really the land, and there's a lot of overlayer, and, and really when you think about the link between land and expand, it's often marketing. And so here, when we do the land, we have SDR, so we, we do 100% inbound, so we never actually cold call customers. Marketing drives all the traffic. Then we qualify the traffic through SDRs, we bring them through sales, we onboard them completely virtually, and then they become transactional. And here where we've evolved is now we know when they're happy, transactional, NPS is great, that's where marketing kicks in, and more and more now we're doing upsell from within the product. And here, so we started, we had one product, we were a point of sale, now we have you know, five or six, seven modules we can sell to our customers. And so here, this logic of saying, okay, the link to all of this is marketing, and we need to ensure that the journey is the same and that the experience for the customer pre and post is amazing. And then we need to ensure that as soon as the customers are happy with the service, that there's a number of technologies that we put in place and a number of teams that we put in place that are focused on expand. And here, when you, when you, when you look at our, our, our two big blocks, we're trying to spend as much time and energy and, and investment in each one of these spots now. And so here, when we even look at expand, we have a full pipeline view on expand, where we have people qualifying leads, we call them customer growth specialists, CGS. We have salespeople selling onto them, we have onboarding teams, we bring them transactional, and as they're transactional and they're happy, we sell them more and more products. And I think here, this is a big thing you, you, gotta, you, you gotta think about is, and obviously everybody I'm sure has seen this, if you don't take care of your expand, you will hit the ceiling that a lot of SaaS companies are seeing, which is your churn offsets growth. And even, so our churn is, is fairly low, but even at a very, very low churn, when you reach 57,000 customers and you have an onboarding rate, if you don't think about the expand and you don't think about how I'm gonna grow my cohorts and how I'm gonna grow our pool, you're gonna end up with a model where your, your, your growth rates are gonna slow down. And 
even though we're a thousand employees, we just announced uh, on our last earning calls, it's by growing the footprint within the customers and ensuring they're happy. So here, the, 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 let's say the takeaway here is think about, think about how I'm gonna expand my customers, think about how I'm gonna make them happy, and try from the earliest possible days to set up a structure where you're going to think about growing those customers and growing your ARPU and not just landing new customers with the current ARPU. And this is what led us to develop new modules, to buy companies that added more uh, components. Um, you know, we have a full-blown e-commerce platform right now that we upsell to our customers. And so th this logic of saying, okay, I'm gonna land and then I'm gonna grow ARPU is gonna force everyone in the company to think about how do I grow ARPU, including product. And the last piece, and I, I think is, is <laughs> people think sometimes it's over the top. I don't think it's over the top. But uh, the last piece is sharing your vision. And, and I, I, you know, leadership is, is about telling everybody where you're going, making people understand on a weekly cadence, but also setting the goals and the big vision for the year. And so what I mean by share our vision is, and I'm gonna bring you through a bit of history of Lightspeed, is every year, and even now, we have all departments do this, we have a kickoff. And inside of the kickoff, it happens at the beginning of the fiscal year, we really go overboard. And <laughs> I think it's good to go overboard because, and we do big productions where we, and obviously the productions in 2013 were not where they are today, but we really try and make everybody understand what are the goals of this year? What are the four or five things that are gonna make us successful? And then we put in place a whole theme. So this was Unstoppable 2013. This was a Better, Harder, Faster, Stronger 2014 with Daft Punk. Uh, then was Mission Impossible. That's when we moved into e-commerce. Uh, uh, um, and again, it was a whole show and Dax and I, uh, the founder, we arrived in a helicopter and it was like a whole thing and we try and make people remember these moments so that, and, and then we map these special moments to the objectives of the year and what are the big things we're gonna do. Um, 2016, the incredible light speeders. <laughs> um, then in 2017, that I think was a very important one for us because we, until that point, our market, we were, you know, we were replacing basically point of sale systems with iPads. And until that point, we were really dealing with early adopters. And early adopters are, you know, um, the market was smaller. And now that's when we figured out we're going into an early majority play here and we need to, so that's why we, were, we came out with the disruptors act now, you know, helping the small guys and, and, and they normally come, so every year they come with a video, they come with a performance, most of the time is uh, 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 embarrassing, they, and they come with a list of themes and we brand the whole thing, they go back with gizmos and we, we bring everybody from everywhere in the world into one, one, uh, one place. Um, then land and expand, that's uh, what I talked about when we were like, okay guys, we need to do way more with our existing customers and that's the year where we built a full team. We have a bigger team now in sales for expand than we do for land, kind of fun. And that was uh, launched in 2018. And the latest we did was up uh, and the theme was climbing and climbing mountains and um, maybe just, um, Again, here for us, the theme was, you know, we always talked about we're gonna do an IPO, we're gonna be a you know, very successful Canadian company, we wanna be in charge of our destiny. And then what happened is we did a great IPO that year and we're like, okay, what's next? And so that's when we came up with the theme of up and okay, we maybe did a Canadian IPO, this was Mont Tremblant, but we need to go and we need to get the Everest. And so the idea here, the whole theme was around um, these are mountains, we climbed the first mountain, we're ready for the next one, and just always finding a way for people to be engaged with your mission, to be engaged with what you're trying to build, and ensuring that your key leaders and, and the key people in the company who are, are the drivers just come back and have a message to hammer, and that everybody understands what we're trying to do. And so these events normally are two, three days, three days, fly everybody in, and it's it, uh, um, fairly expensive, but very, very useful for everybody. And especially as we've become bigger, it's so important that we all understand what we're trying to do. So, I'm not gonna go through it, it's an eight minute video, but then what we do is we get everybody in Montreal, 
We're running out of spaces in Montreal. I mean, we've tried pretty much every single venue you can find around the, around the city. And you can see it's raining every year, so that's another curse we have. But then what we do is we produce these videos and we get, um, we get everybody to review these videos and everything that happened. And um, also, um, we're not gonna go through it because it's a 12 minute video, but also what we do is then we take those themes and every quarter, I give an update and we, we produce a video for the update and I'm like, okay, this is where we are with regards to the goals. This is what we achieved. This is what we, 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 we missed. This is where we have to work harder. And, and so throughout the year, they have these themes that come back and these reminders of, hey, this is what we're gonna do this year. Um, maybe just last thing as a proof point, I think it's kind of a fun, this was the first one, Lacto, we were 12. Um, then this was uh, Sakakomi, uh, Sakakomi number two, uh, Esterel, Esterel number two. Uh, this was in Quebec City, and the latest we did now, where we have 450 people in Just Go to Market at Lightspeed. So, very exciting journey. Um, I hope you found this uh, interesting. Maybe the last piece is we, as you know, we are now a public company. Um, we, we went public at uh, $16, our stock is uh, today uh, in less than a year is above $30. $30. It's been an incredible story um, and I'm very proud to be part of this and thank you very much for listening. Have a good day.